Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Covered in ice at the very bottom of the world is a vast continent that has been a subject of discussion by many alternative researchers for decades. And for this video I've been looking into two specific claims. Both claims try to give a positive answer to the question of was Antarctica once home to a now lost civilization. The two claims are as follows. A. That there are pyramids on Antarctica and B. The famous Piri Reis map which apparently shows the coastline of the continent. The coastline of Antarctica is only known about today because of sonar, although the ice is melting fast and maybe more has been exposed in the past few decades. I don't know, but it was certainly covered over with thick ice sheets in 1966 when Charles Hapgood released his famous book, Maps of the Ancient Sea Kings. The book proposes there was an ancient civilization that surveyed the globe, based on the analysis of ancient maps, including the Piri Reis map. It is claimed by Hapgood and promoted by other authors such as Eric von Daniken that the map created in 1513 accurately shows part of the coastline of Antarctica. It is claimed that the map was compiled using even more ancient maps, which must originate from a lost ancient civilization or even aliens. Because, as far as we know, Antarctica has been covered in ice since before humans learned how to even sail the seas. The Piri Reis map seems to be the evidence that many people draw upon in the quest for the lost civilization, and many use it to claim that Antarctica is in fact Atlantis, even though it doesn't fulfill any of the words of Plato. For years I've blindly believed that this map did show Antarctica, but now that I have the time to actually look into things myself, without just taking people's words for it, I'll see if the evidence really does stack up. Hapgood, von Daniken and the others who promote the Antarctica Piri Reis hypothesis are not specific map historians or specialists. So I first turn my attention to Gregory McIntosh, an historian of cartography, because he examined the map in greater detail than anyone else ever has and released a book 20 years ago titled The Piri Reis Map of 1513. For a start, he was actually able to find most of the sources for the map in Christopher Columbus's writings. And because multiple maps were used, that explains a number of the errors we see, such as the appearance of the Virgin Islands in two different locations, as well as the strange topography of North America. So, what did Macintosh say about the Antarctic coastline? Well, the first thing to note is that this supposed coastline of the icy continent is hundreds of miles north of the actual location of Antarctica, which for a map that gets lots of places in roughly the right place, this is surely a huge error to make. Furthermore, the map does not include the Drake Passage. Notes on the map itself also say that this part of the world has a warm climate. These things together show that this cannot be a genuine depiction of Antarctica, and that is based on the actual map itself, and not an interpretation of it. Because remember, the world is a lot warmer today than it was 12, 16, 20 or even 25,000 years ago, as shown by the large quantities of ice core data that we have. Yet, the map itself says that this part of the world was warm. So, I'm sorry, just how old was the so-called source map that was used by Piri Reis? Was it 50,000 years old? 100,000 years old? And what was it drawn on? On stone tablets? A cave? The whole thing really makes no actual sense. Furthermore, the Drake Passage opened up between 49 and 17 million years ago, something that has been analysed in great detail by geologists. So, to not include this on the map is strange. The continent could be placed too far north by accident, I admit that, but this is a mere assumption, and proponents of the Antarctica hypothesis want us to believe the map is accurate. So, if we assume it is accurate, how do we explain how and why Antarctica drifted hundreds of miles southward, away from the other continents, whilst those other continents stayed in the same relative positions? The hypothesis that this is Antarctica really doesn't make any sense. But if that's the case, then what are we looking at? 
To me, it's pretty clear and obvious that what we're looking at is a very distorted South America. Or it's even possible that Piri Reis, or maybe his sources, simply guessed. Yet many people say that it is an accurate depiction of the Antarctic coastline, mapping key features. And I suppose I can see what they're saying, but you could also say it's a somewhat accurate depiction of the South American coastline, as shown here. And the South American coastline does make a great deal more sense, as the climate in this part of the world is warmer. It wasn't under ice, and it also explains why there's no Drake Passage. Depending on the perspective of the cartographer, it's actually also in the right place. This is another old map that skewed the world we know today, but even though it's inaccurate, we can clearly see what it's depicting. A recent article by Clyde Winters on ancientorigins.net seems to have forgotten the words of Macintosh, and he seems to draw upon the research of the 1960s, and not the later research made 30 to 40 years later, which, in my opinion, is now more relevant and far more advanced. The article promotes the acceptance of the theory by a naval captain in the 1960s, and not the more critical words of an historian of cartography in the 21st century, which to me is unbalanced and quite odd. Hapgood's theories on how the coastline of Antarctica was present on the Piri Reis map were once viewed as reasonable and a very probable interpretation. But to still believe this means we have to throw out all the geological and historical work that has been done for the past 40 years. Which to me isn't progress, it's going backwards. No 500 year old map is particularly accurate, and the Piri Reis map has many errors concerning North and South America. If we are to blindly believe that it shows Antarctica, then you should also believe that North America had a completely different coastline, that there were once two sets of Virgin Islands, and also that Antarctica has somehow moved hundreds of miles south, whilst the other continents have barely moved position. If you can explain all of this to me scientifically, then I will believe that we are looking at Antarctica. But to me, it all makes no sense. Another thing that makes even less sense is the next claim, that there are in fact pyramids on Antarctica. Many people promote the clickbait hypothesis that a couple of mountains on Antarctica are in fact ancient pyramids, built by some lost ancient civilization, maybe Atlanteans or aliens, yet the evidence is biased and beyond terrible. There is absolutely no doubt that these are natural geological formations, peaks of mountains that are poking through the ice. They're comparable to the natural Bosnian pyramids, and not the man-made ones of Egypt and Central America. Look at this picture, and then look at this picture. And you might think, yes, this could be a pyramid. But you're not noticing this, which shows how the mountain range carries on. This Google Maps view is extremely biased, because it is zoomed right in, and it doesn't show where the so-called pyramid is positioned. If it was isolated on a plateau, then maybe. But, as you can now see, it is clearly part of a much larger mountain range. Furthermore, this edge of the so-called pyramid is wavy, which does seem strange, because surely any man-made structure would have a straight edge. It would be overly difficult to make it wavy. Every single credible geologist that has looked at the images of the Antarctica pyramids say that these structures are natural. And, as a geologist myself, I totally agree. There is actually no way to argue that this isn't natural. There is no evidence that any researcher can present. It is clearly a part of the Ellsworth Mountains, and these mountains are actually well known, and they contain amazing fossils more than 500 million years old. Geologically, they're amazing, but they are certainly not archaeological wonders. Not in the slightest. The Great Pyramid of Egypt stands at 139 metres in height, whilst this mountain stands at 1,265 metres, and it also has a wavy edge. Man-made? I don't think so. Pyramid shapes can and do happen in nature. In Bosnia we see a clear example, and now we have another example in Antarctica. And this is actually very likely to happen because of something known as freeze thaw. Basically, moisture gets inside rocks and mountains in daylight hours, and forms ice at night, which cracks the rock. 
Then the ice thaws and the moisture goes even deeper until it freezes again and then it cracks the rock even more. A gradual process that can cause huge rock sections to completely break away, sometimes in regular shapes. It is this process that created the Matterhorn in the Alps, another natural mountain that is somewhat pyramidal. So, the case of a lost ancient civilization on the continent of Antarctica has very flimsy foundations. It requires cherry picking information and not looking at the science and history. If the Piri Reis map is showing us Antarctica, then all of the other anomalies must be explained with a credible hypothesis. And if these structures are pyramids, then those that think they are must explain why the geologists are wrong. To think there was a civilization on Antarctica in the remote past means we must also explain how and why all of the ice core data and climate modeling is wrong, how the thick ice sheets formed in a relatively short space of time, and how you build a 1200 meter high pyramid with a wavy edge on a mountain range. The arguments in favour of this hypothesis are very weak, and Occam's razor says it's wrong. I'm more than happy for you to disagree, and I'd love to hear your opinion in the comments section below. I obviously don't have all the answers, I'm just looking at the evidence with fresh eyes, and giving you my own point of view. But yes, my opinions can be changed, but only with good quality evidence. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.